Welcome back everybody. Today I am going to show you how to compost meat. Now if you know your composting rules, you know that you are a terrible person if you compost meat, right? You're not supposed to compost meat. Oh, don't throw meat in. Don't throw bread in. Don't throw oil in. Don't throw cheese in. Don't throw... Oh, come on! There are too many rules and we are going to throw some of those rules out today. Why would you want to compost meat? That's the question. Okay. Why would you want to compost meat? Well, if you know your chemistry, you know that meat has a lot of protein in it. And protein has a lot of nitrogen in it. And if you know your plant science NPK, the N in NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, these are the big, big three nutrients that plants need to be happy. And nitrogen is what causes a lot of growth and meat is loaded with nitrogen. It also has these two in it and it also has a bunch of micronutrients in it. Meat is actually very nutrient dense. It's good for you, it's good for plants. So if you want to be able to compost it, People don't, you know, you always see all these rules, don't throw in your compost pile, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna bring problems, it's gonna stink, it's gonna bring rats, whatever. That's actually, I haven't found that to be the case. If you dig a big, if you have a big compost pile, you could throw meat in it. But I'm gonna show you how to deal with meat and other nasty things, like say you wanted to compost a lasagna and you only have a small compost pile and you don't want a big stinking mess. This is how you do it. First thing you do, is dig yourself a hole, say two foot deep. There we go. Oh yeah, that looks professional. So you dig yourself a hole. Now you've got your soil, you've pulled out to the side. Throw your meat into the hole. Hey, let's make that look like meat. Yeah, that's like a some sort of meat item. Right, so you've got it down there in the hole. And say you had dog manure, right? You could throw dog manure in there. It doesn't matter, okay? Because it's going into the ground. Say you've got some fresh chicken manure. Let's make that green. Oh man, look at that fresh chicken manure. Okay. This sort of stuff might be really hot. Like you wouldn't want to put it right on the ground or on the plants, it might attract flies and whatever else. You could throw chicken manure in your regular compost if you want. But anyhow, once you do this, you dig a pit, then fill the pit in with soil. And what I like to do is make a mound over that pit of soil like this, right? So I've got the really kind of gross stuff here, but you remember it's loaded with nitrogen and everything else. This is why we want it. This goes back into the soil. It's going to feed your plants nicely. And then what you do is on top of this thing, you plant yourself, get a nicer looking green. You plant yourself some seeds. One of my favorite things to grow in a pile like this is watermelons or pumpkins. And over time what they'll do is they'll run all over the ground and be happy and big because they are getting some really good stuff here. So you've got these vines just running away and they're feeding, meanwhile, their roots are going down, 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 and eating all this good stuff down here that you normally would have thrown away. And you don't have to feed these guys again. When they get their roots down into that, they absolutely go nuts. I have <laughs> thrown slaughter wastes and raw manure. I've even thrown human sewage from a bucket toilet down into a pit like this. And if you're in an area where it doesn't flood and cause trouble, uh, like if this, is in a, if this was in a water table area, a big flooding area or whatever, you probably wouldn't want to do this. But when you have 
the ground uh, in an area where you actually have some decent drainage and that sort of thing. You just bury your stuff in the ground, plant on top of it, and the vines will find what they need and run. Another thing you can do is plant corn. Corn does really, really well in this sort of a system. Plant corn in there, you could plant sunflowers. I've done sunflowers and I've done watermelons. Let's make a watermelon. Let's let the plant make a watermelon. There we go. There's a watermelon. Nice, beautiful watermelon. <laughs> because you composted meat. Now, you're probably familiar with the story of the Indians and the pilgrims. I have an ancestor that came over on the Mayflower and they were saved by some of the traditional Native American techniques and one of those, it is alleged, is Come on, you guys know it. You have a pit and you stick a fish in it. A dead fish. Right? So you stick a fish in the hole, cover it over, you plant your corn on top. So the fish over the season feeds the corn. Wonderful. You're not wasting it. Now, I wouldn't catch fish simply to bury them in the ground, but what if you're a fisherman? Why not throw the fish guts in there? It's, it's really, I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer when you think about it that all this material, all these things, animals die, they fall to the ground, and they rot, and they get eaten by plants. So what you're doing is you're taking very high nitrogen, high fertility materials, putting them into the ground, letting the plants feed on them, and you're not throwing it into the landfill. You're not wasting it. It's not getting tossed out. Why would you toss this in your trash? This is like a good fistful of solid fertilizer right here that's going into the ground and can feed you. So when you're talking about survival and that sort of thing, it is so stupid to follow all these composting rules and throw out meat because you're afraid of it or you think the rats are going to get it or whatever else. Bury it deep, plant on top of it, and you will turn it into watermelons or corn or whatever else you're growing. Uh, I, you, another thing you could do if you want to to compost is, is say you've got your garden beds, make a, make a trench kind of down the middle of it and just throw your rotten fish, manure, meat, well, wrong one, wrong meat, lasagna, throw all that stuff down that middle trench, bury it over, plant on it. So all this stuff, all this stuff can go into your gardens and if you don't have something like bears, which are gonna dig it up, you know, in bear country you may not be able to do this, um, but bears will get what they wanna get. If you have all this material, don't throw it away. Find a way to reuse it and you're not buying fertilizer and you're closing a loop. Even the composting toilets, you can do the same thing. If a composting toilet, you dump the bucket in, like a camp toilet, you dump the bucket in the hole, you plant on top of it. The plants will not pull up deadly bacteria, E. coli, or whatever else. The thing is, is that when those, those get into the ground, they start competing with fungi and soil organisms, they get destroyed, they all get turned into compost over time, the plant's roots will come down and find what they need, and you are growing on top of stuff that you're allegedly not allowed to compost. I cover a lot of this in my book, Compost Everything, um, because really, composting doesn't have to be this big complicated thing. It's just a matter of throwing stuff on the ground or in this case burying things in the ground. These are traditional methods that will provide for you in a pinch and it allows you to take some very highly fertile stuff and put it in one area. Instead of making compost and spreading it out all over the ground, you are basically spot composting in certain areas, planting on top of it. It rots into the ground. It feeds your crops for that entire year and sometimes into the next year. 
and you are not wasting that material, you're not throwing it away, and you're feeding your plant. I mean, there's really, it's, there's really no reason not to do this. Um, unless you've got, like I said, bears or something that are gonna dig it up. Makes a lot of sense. All that nasty kitchen scraps, whatever. Every time you clean out the kitchen, uh, you know, you clean out your cabinets, you clean out your refrigerator, whatever else, dig a pit, throw it all into the pit, let the plants eat it. Put a mound on the top of it or just bury it flat, plant on top of it, and just let your plants run and let them reuse. So you're not wasting anything. Anyhow, I hope that was helpful to you. Give it a try at home. Let me know how it works for you. And thanks for watching. Until next time, may your thumbs always be green.